Hey all, welcome to Circle of Tone. And today we're going to check out the effect of putting over a thousand dollars worth of pickups and internals into a budget $90 guitar. So uh, check out after the music is finished, uh, we, I'll discuss exactly what I did and how I got the sounds and how I set up the guitar. <laughs> Okay, so this is a Epiphone guitar that I got for ninety dollars on sale. This always pops up for either a hundred or ninety bucks. The P ninety Special um, on every other like large sale that uh, Musicians Friend or or um, Guitar Center has. It might actually be exclusive to Guitar Center, and uh, I actually liked how it played. But the reason I bought this guitar was because I do have these P ninety pickups. The P90 pickups, uh, I'm not sure if some of you might have heard about the Les Paul, the 59 era, the golden age, um, when it comes to mojo and things like that. So I was interested in that. So over the years, I've picked up some bargains. Um, I will not pay the going rate for them. I'm not insane. And uh, what I've done, I've cobbled together the exact internals of a 1959 P90 guitar. So essentially, we have a 1959 P90 here in the bridge, which is what you just heard in the clip. And this is a, a 70s P90. It's the one with the clear bobbin, if you took the, the top off. This has actually been painted. This is this this cover is cream, but it's been painted black, not by me. Um, so to get this pickup alone in the condition it I, it was, with the full length, it has the full length of the, the braided wire, and the braided wire had this tiniest little smidgen of, uh, of solder on it, and it was underneath this cover, it's like mint. So to get that alone, you're looking at at least 700 bucks just for the one pickup. These go for about 300 bucks in this condition with you know plenty of wire. Um, also, the inside these, the famous old Gibsons are full of old Central Lab pots. And I've been collecting those over the years too. And uh, so these are the 50s Central Lab pots. The output jack is supposed to be a Central Lab, but I, exchanged it with something that's better in the press you may have seen there's a new jack for guitars designed by uh, actually a friend of mine called pure tone jacks and i a would i put them in all my guitars now i put like i put them in like 10 guitars this one included um i a would the old jack to this jack the pure tone jack has twice the amount of surface area um for your ground and for your uh for the hot of your output pickups and your internals. So what that does, the, 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 the design is actually over 100 years old, the, the, the old design. So this is just a modern take where you don't get the kick, 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 kick the rattling around and the, the crackling and all the rest of it, and you get a much more solid connection. 
and in my experience you get more a little bit more uh, life in the upper mids it's I was finding things wrong with this guitar that I didn't know were wrong with it because I couldn't hear it on the old setup that's how much of a difference it made so this isn't a sales pitch for them I'm just going on about what's inside the guitar I will be doing a uh, an AB video with uh, the Puritone jack in mind so keep keep uh, posted for that so you can hear the difference between one item in your chain one four dollar out item in your chain I think it's like four or five bucks because uh, he priced it the same as Central Lab so I hope him wish him well with that so what other what else did I do to this I installed uh, Gibson Grover uh, tuners they cost me less than 30 bucks used uh, the Rotomatics I put a bone nut on it and uh, also, the, the wire and everything is all Gibson. Uh, so I, I really went to town on this, on an $80 guitar. Plus tax and all that. But, uh, yeah, well, and I'm listening back to the clip that I did. By far the best I've ever done. It's just two guitar tracks. Uh, actually, it's three. It's two guitar tracks and there's one uh, thickener in the middle. Um, I forgot about that. And it's just mic up, put up, and I'm hearing it's... For, remember these are P90s, these are not humbuckers and you hear the tightness and the uh, just the excitement of, of everything and it was it was going through my it went up through my Marshall and uh, it's going that was going through a cream back the 70 watt cream back uh, mic'd up with uh, two SM57s and uh, so tell me what you think in the comments this isn't a clickbait, you know, you say, oh, $1,000 in a $50 guitar. This isn't thing, something I dreamed up. This is something I actually did. And I thought, you know what? This clip sounds so good, I'm going to dedicate a video to it. I, I think it sounds good. You might be like, oh, what the hell is that? It is good. This is circular tone, bitch. <laughs> I don't play. So, yeah, as you can probably tell, it has... I'm obsessed about this stuff, and it has... People make fun of Gibson because they recreated the caps, the Bumblebee caps. They recreated them with fakes. They put really cheap caps inside of uh, like a plastic shell, which looks like the old, uh, I think it's uh, oil and paper or oil um, capacitors from the back in the day. So they don't sound like them. And a lot of people, I just watched with horror at uh, some guy pulling apart a 1960 Gibson uh, harness. So all the pots, because the pots were 1000K with one meg instead of 500K, he thought they were broken. They put uh, 700 to 1,000 to 1 meg pots in the tone stack sometimes, in the old Gibsons. So this guy's destroying it, thinking and I, it can't be put back together again. You know, it's if you put a new pot in there, it's going to sound slightly off. Part of the... People say that the old capacitors leak, and they do. People say the old uh, central lab pots, they fail. So, you know, when they're on zero, you can kind of, kind of just about hear it. That's part of the tone. The actual... If it's all perfect and pristine, uh, you don't get a lot of the mojo out of it. I just I know from experience because I don't just have these in these guitars; I have them in others. When you roll down the tone on it, it doesn't react perfectly, but it reacts beautifully. It's so when I see people swapping out old components in the Gibsons because one part is slightly scratching now and then, it just drives me insane. Because uh, you know now the cat is out of the bag. Don't really uh, you know if you see cheap Central Lab pots. Uh, give me a shout. Let me pick them up. Uh, don't buy them. Just give them to me because, you know, we're bros. Um, this is just an, a... a it, I think it proves, really, of my side of the fence on the tone wood debate. Well, obviously, I'm not a... You know, I don't mind putting... I'm, a, I'm an electronics and a fit and, you know, the whole thing type of guy, not just the woods. So, in my experience... Uh, a well put together guitar, which this isn't. I had to work on this, so quite a lot to get it uh, to sounding good. A well put together guitar uh, is mostly a battle. Then there's the electronics, then there's the wood. The wood might give you, I, I wouldn't even say it gives you 5%. I mean, it's all glued together. You know, it's usually the beautiful guitars you see, like Kiesel's, are about five different sandwiches of, of woods, and with this glue between all of that, and then there's a tiny little film on top, which makes it look like a beautiful top. You know what I mean? So don't get, don't, don't get like, first bite is not with the eye, it's with the ear. <laughs> Rotten! So yeah, tell me what you think. Uh, tell me if you think if I'm crazy for putting, a th probably, if you got all this, just buying a harness, you know, a 59 harness will cost you, well, you know, the four 
uh, input the four uh, pot ones, they'll cost you 600 bucks just for the harness. So I wouldn't pay that money, but I have picked up bargains over the years. So I'm so proud of this. Uh, I have been thinking about getting a proper Gibson to put this in, you know, which doesn't have, which has a set neck and all that stuff. But after hearing that clip, why? I mean, you know, I might have to shim the neck a little bit to, to make it perfect. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's like, sometimes you just got to let it go into the wild. You know what I mean? Oh, that ugly guitar. Look at that shit. Love it. Okay, so uh, if you like that, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and uh, I'll keep you posted on the a being for the uh, output track that I discussed earlier, and uh, have a good one.